Hi everyone, how you doing? Uh, it's good to be in Italy where my last name is pronounced perfectly every time. Um, so I have to explain the joke of, of my title first. Um, at least in the US, there's like a children's saying. I don't really know what to call it. It's not long enough to be a song, but like in, when you're a young kid and you want the class to express you know, appreciation for someone, you, you chant two, four, six, eight, who do we appreciate? So if you don't have that in your country, you should. <laughs> um, and uh, fortunately, the rhyme works with interpolate and eight as well. And um, you'll see how the numbers uh, play into everything as well. Um, so I used to work at Mapsen. We'll, we'll get this over with right at the start. Um, the work for the Peleus Geocoder, which, which uh, this is all about, and the work on interpolation was done there. Um, and of course, as many of you may know, <laughs> Mapsen is no more. Um, it's very sad. Um, you can ask me about that maybe uh, later tonight. And, um, but uh, for me personally, uh, I'm continuing to work on the Peleus Geocoder. Um, we've, uh, a teammate and I have started a new company to continue and hopefully uh, make it our day job uh, for a little while longer. And it's been a fun ride so far. If you want to hear more about that, definitely ask me as well. Um, we're not really here to talk about that. We're here to talk about geocoding itself. So here's our little demo of autocomplete for, for Peleus. There's a link to really start and learn more if you'd like to learn um, about what we do um, and the approach that we've taken and the pros and cons and all the fun things. Um, and as we just, we just saw for uh, 20 whole minutes, geocoders love addresses. Um, they are a great way to find places, right? Most of us are trained to write addresses it's different in every country, but in each country it's maybe mostly similar, hopefully. Not, not so perfectly similar as you might like if you're writing the code to handle it, but similar enough. Um, and so addresses uh, where they do exist are great um, for finding the place that we all are looking for. Um, this is a, a, a count of addresses in, in a, a standard Peleus build. Um, we import several different data sources, so we have um, quite a few, a lot of them come from open addresses, which is uh, administrative data directly from cities, so that's really nice. Um, and then I don't have the numbers with me for just what's from OpenStreetMap versus what's not, um, but I, would, I think they're actually surprisingly similar to the numbers you might have just seen. There's somewhere around, I think we import about 60 million addresses from OpenStreetMap. Um, so we gotta do a little bit better there to catch up. Um, if you wanna check out these numbers, there's a link. Um, but even with 500 million globally, that's not enough. Um, this is a graph of, of address coverage per country. Um, and people who know about such things, who, who make it their goal to estimate, say that about two people per address, which is one, half an address per person, just to make the graph a little bit easier to read where higher is better, about half an address per person is about what you expect for good address coverage. Um, that's the red line. And you can see there's a couple countries doing great. Netherlands, Denmark, Australia. Uh, they just added a, an address uh, import of their entire country, every address in the entire country. So kudos to them. Norway, Estonia, Finland. Everyone else has at least a little bit of work to do. Um, and this is only, you notice there's way more countries that are on here. Um, the graph doesn't get any better if it were to extend off the side of the screen, as you might imagine. Um, so we have this dual problem of there's a lot of addresses, but not nearly enough. Um, and that's a problem that's existed for a long time, and it might be useful to first look at how this problem was solved a little while ago. Um, so this is a photo uh, of some, some folks at the, the US uh, Census Bureau um, who has been, you know, they've been tasked with figuring out all sorts of things about a fairly large country for a long time, since long before computers could really play much of a role. Um, I'd like to think they're discussing postal codes or something, like we just had some discussion about how, how troublesome they can be. Um, it's definitely worthy of its own talk. Um, so they had this problem. They wanted to be able to at least estimate addresses all over a large country. Um, they didn't even have the computers to handle 500 million addresses if they had them, and they certainly didn't have 500 million addresses. Um, so they needed to estimate, right? Uh, this is a photo of 1,300 people were working at one point making paper maps to build the data sets that were required uh, just to get decent 
understanding of where addresses were in the US. It's probably one person with QJS now. Uh, so what they built was, uh, it, it, came, it came through a bunch of different names and it eventually ended up being called Tiger and it got this amazing uh, old school logo, uh, which is really a work of art. Um, and Tiger includes many, many different things, but the most important thing that it includes, oh, by the way, if you want to see more cool old, old photos, I'll post the slides. Um, they're on Pinterest, which is really interesting, but they're great photos. Um, so what Tiger made uh, is, is an interpolation data set, an address range data set, right? And what that is, is for every segment of a street that you care about, um, store what the beginning address would be and what the end address would be, and nothing about the actual addresses themselves. And so these data sets are, I don't know, for the US today, tens of megabytes, not enormous. So reasonable to work on in a computer of, of your, um, and, and reasonably accurate, right? We've all gotten directions somewhere, and you at least get to the right street with an address that's maybe not perfect. Um, so we were thinking on the Peleus team a while back, Tiger is great in the United States, but there's a whole world out there. Some countries do have interpolation data sets already, many don't. Um, but we thought it would be interesting to, to attempt to build an interpolation data set um, from the data that's already out there. And so to do that, you need a couple things. You need, you need streets, and OpenStreetMap is, it's in the name. I mean, there's pretty good street coverage. Um, and you need addresses, and we just saw there's, there's 80 million uh, in, in OpenStreetMap and growing every day. And that doesn't even count OpenStreetMap supports interpolation ranges as well. Um, and we thought it would be nice to, to be able to import open addresses as well. Um, I'll use the L word and say that the licensing of that is, is quite interesting. Um, the new geocoding guidelines say that it, should, uh, it would not fall under the ODBL, that uh, resulting data set, but I think if it does, that's also great too. Um, and so what do you get when you combine those and build an interpolation data set for the parts of the world that we have coverage? for. Uh, you get the Peleus interpolation engine. Um, here's a link on GitHub where you can see a little bit more, and I'm going to show you kind of how it works. Um, so here is our, our demo interface. It's like a really more of a debug interface, I guess, than a demo interface, but it's really useful for figuring out what's going on. This is a street here in Milano. Um, across town is where I found one that was a, a good couple things to show off at first. So uh, you can see some blue and red points. Those are uh, address points that we know about from, these are all from OpenStreetMap. Um, we uh, have to, as you can see with the 15 in the lower left, you have to um, map where it belongs on the actual street, right? That's kind of a big building. The address point is in the center. Um, for interpolation, it's useful to, to project it onto the street. Um, and then the red and the blue, um, it's definitely useful to detect uh, left and right side of the street. You'll see why um, in a minute. And so uh, this is showing kind of what, we, what you end up having to store for each address. This is actually every known address. Um, it's basically what I just said, where, where it's from, what's the house number, uh, latitude and longitude, and projected as well. And what you get when you combine all that, that together for streets, and then you add some math to do the interpolation in between, is you can put in an address that doesn't exist um, and get an estimate of where it will be. So in this case, if there were a two, a new building comes in, um, maybe you know, it wasn't mapped and it's actually there, um, it would be approximately there. And this, this is kind of nice. It can estimate in between the one and the three, rather than, say, for example, with the Tiger data set, um, it only knows the address range for the entire street. So if you have a long, a long street segment, you can get a little bit more accuracy even with a few addresses. So um, kind of nice and all from OpenStreetMap data. It doesn't require. Uh, 1,300 people making paper maps to, uh, to build that data set in advance. Um, again, 14, kind of on the other side, closer to the 15 than the 11, so I think that math works out. We've tested it a little bit. <laughs> um, not all streets are lines, as you may be aware, are straight lines. Um, I didn't mention it, but in the last slide you may have seen some yellow points. You see a few more of them here, and that's where there is curvature into the street. Um, this is in New Jersey in New York. And if you want to interpolate properly across the street, you can see here we're looking for 22. Um, and it, it doesn't interpolate, say, between the 14 and the 23 or between the 35 and the 2 at the, be at the ends. That would put you in the middle of a forest in either case, and that would be not ideal. 
but if you uh, take advantage of the geometry that's in OpenStreetMap, you can do that. Um, here's an example of a really long street. This is near Boulder, Colorado. Uh, there was a state of the map conference there last year. Maybe some of the people here were there. Uh, it was very, very beautiful. Um, this is like a 50 kilometer long street. So lots of fun. Uh, here's a really fun, complicated example of mapping to streets here in Milano. This is a big uh, piazza nearby. Um, and you can see that, that there's been a lot of work done in OpenStreetMap to actually correctly identify this really complicated street. Um, and you can see there's a few errors. Maybe there are bugs. Maybe there's duplicate uh, addresses in OpenStreetMap. I see two 12s down there, and they say they're on opposite sides of the street when they definitely aren't. So maybe worth something worth checking out this afternoon if anyone's looking for a stroll. Um, so here we get to why odd and even matters. Uh, this is from the house numbering Wikipedia page, which will repeatedly surprise you at how much complexity there is. Uh, yes, someone laughs knowingly. Um, there's really two common uh, orderings for addresses. Um, the first one, the top one, is like the zigzag pattern. It's really common. Um, probably the most, the most common, especially in Europe, I really could not find too many examples that weren't like this, which is nice because it's the most straightforward for, from a mathematical standpoint, right? Um, but there's also the clockwise option on the uh, bottom where the house numbers go up on one side and down on the other. And obviously, if you don't account for that, uh, any attempts to interpolate will be met with sadness. Uh, here's an example of that. This is in Berlin. Uh, you can see there's one right next to 108. And if you look, they're going up on one side, down on the other. And a couple kilometers off to the right on the screen is 50, where it turns back around. So that's pretty fun. So let's look at an example where there's not good coverage. Right in Milan and in Berlin, uh, we know about most of the addresses. This is uh, just outside of Johannesburg in South Africa. Um, you can see it's a really busy city. Johannesburg has like 10 million people. Um, but it's not completely mapped. Right? There's, there's buildings everywhere, whether or not there's a building in OSM. Um, this is Smith Street. Uh, and there are two, exactly two, addresses on this big, long street. Uh, 111 at one end and 321 on the other. Um, and just from those two addresses, uh, you can interpolate somewhere in the middle. So estimating where 175 is, it would be about, about there. Um, so I think that's really, really cool for that middle ground where there, there is some address coverage, but not complete. Um, an interpolation data set built from OSM can have uh, you can get a lot of a bang for your open data buck, so to speak. Um, so I think that's pretty cool. Um, here's another example. Uh, this is in New Delhi, India. Um, same thing, two, two addresses, really long street. Um, you can estimate where the address would be anywhere in between them. Note in this one, there's, there's more of the street off to the left. Um, you can't really make any informed choice about what's there. You could guess, but that would be more often wrong than right. Um, so that's not advisable. Uh, here's a very sad example. And if you look carefully at the map, it's very nearby. Um, this is a street with just one address. And unfortunately, you cannot interpolate on a street with just one address. Um, so if someone is looking to, to add another address somewhere where it would have a big impact, this little street just north of the campus would be a good, a good shot. Uh, you know, uh, if you want more examples, uh, we're working on that. I think it would be really cool to, to find all the streets out there with exactly one address. Um, so not everything has gone according to plan uh, in the course of building this code. Um, and not everything will ever go according to plan on a geocoder. So this will be sort of the rocket explosion montage part of the talk. Um, we were reminded very, very quickly when we built this engine that not all addresses are numbers only. Um, this is in Queens in New York. Anyone from the area uh, knows the pain of dealing with that area. There's, there's a hyphen in every, every address. Um, here's an example um, of, I think this was uh, either disconnected uh, roundabouts kind of on the left side over there, or uh, possibly uh, street segments, the, the OSM no, or ways going in, the, in different directions. You can see that the left, what, means, what is left and right switches. Um, this one was fixed just entirely by updating OSM data. Um, and now you can see there's a little bit better understanding of the roundabouts. and odd and even is consistent on the whole street. Um, so that's really cool. That would be another great, I know there's tools out there already to do things like that, detect um, ways that don't go in the right order consistently. 
Uh, here's a, an example. Um, one of the components of interpolation, you have to do textual matching on the street um, name and, the, and the, the name of the street on the address and the name of the street way itself. Um, street names are not unique, even in a single city. This is in Berlin. Uh, I can't see the street name. This is a really early version, but suffice it to say there are two very different streets with exactly the same name. Um, the solution there is postal codes um, to at least differentiate them if the data is there. Uh, here's an even better example. This is all in New Jersey near New York. Lots of streets with the same name. Yeah, very painful. Um, so what's coming in the future? Um, well, you saw the demo at the beginning uh, with autocomplete support in Peleus. It doesn't support interpolated addresses right now. Uh, you can imagine that since interpolation is already sort of guessing at what's happening, um, guessing when you only have a few characters to go by, maybe only a number, is even harder than the general autocomplete problem, which is already um, the stuff of nightmares. Um, we may be able to figure out something. If you're interested in that, I can tell you all about the pain of that uh, at another time. Uh, we also are not very good programmers. So right now, uh, conflating all of the addresses and all of these streets takes uh, 16 days on the computers we've run it on. Um, it's pretty single threaded right now, so there's a lot of easy wins. Um, so it feels like we're running it on a computer like this. This is another old census uh, photo that I found. So, um, but we swear it's a very fast machine. Um, so that's something that will be nice. So um, whoever makes the edit to add that address on the street nearby, come back in a couple weeks and it should be good. Um, and then uh, no OSM talk would be complete without a list of what you can do to help. Um, streets is the obvious one, adding streets. The names are very important as well. Um, people on the ground looking at street signs are important. Um, again, without the textual matching from address to the street, um, you can't do interpolation. Um, adding extra streets wherever they, er, adding extra addresses wherever possible is great. There's a lot of, I notice especially a lot of um, like restaurants and points of interest uh, don't have their address. Um, that could be an easy way to map something that already exists and just get a little bit more address information. And once again, postal codes, you can't interpolate or really ever estimate postal codes. They're just uh, basically a huge mystery to all people of the world. Um, again, definitely worthy of its own talk. So adding postal codes for, to existing addresses really helps for people that do need to use a postal code to find that address. There's really nothing you can do to guess. Um, and if you want to get extra fancy, um, there is a page on the OSM wiki. Um, I should have put the link in here. All about um, the tags for interpolation. OSM has native support for interpolating um, for, for creating interpolated ranges rather than adding addresses themselves. So if you're um, in a pinch for time and you want to map a big long street at least a little bit, um, using an, interpolated, an interpolation range will work in Nominatum and Peleus right out of the box, which is really great. Um, and I end all my talks with a picture of my cat, so thank you very much. So thank you, Julian. Are there questions? Yes, I saw that, that there were people taking notes. Yeah. You said that um, you reorder, reordered the ways of a street um, to make your interpolation works. Does, it, does this mean that um, your software is not able to work with streets where some parts of the streets are one ways in different directions? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I don't know offhand. Uh, if, you ha if you know an example of that, actually I'd love to test it out um, some other time. There's so many examples of, of, uh, of edge cases like that, tricky streets. Um, we, OpenStreetMap has really good handling of all of that and by following kind of the patterns of, of OpenStreetMap tags and customs, we've, we've gotten pretty far. So I think um, if it works in, in other OSM software, it should work. But I'm sure you can find something that breaks. Great question. Okay, uh, I have a, about one specific case. In, in my country, the uh, typical standard address system is that we have uh, even numbers on one side and uh, odd on the other side, and they're not correlated at all, so it's not like zigzag system. Maybe in the beginning of street it is, but in the end it's completely off. Actually, I think you had one sample in this boulder about that also, where you were interpolating, assuming that the numbering is kind of zigzag or that it makes sense to uh, interpolate uh, odd number between even ones. 
but actually it doesn't, uh, and uh, you end up completely wrong addresses. You, you should interpolate uh, independently, even and odd numbers. Have you considered this case, sir? Yeah, I think that would fall in handling of the um, of kind of the, the clockwise code that we have. It, it basically allows uh, addresses on the left or the right side of the street to be handled independently. Right? I'll I'll go back to that one photo in um, in Berlin. Let's see if we can find it. It's pretty visually. Right, so if you didn't know that if you were looking for, say, 11 is a missing address here, right? Um, if you didn't know that you couldn't, say, estimate between 1 and 108, which would get you nowhere, right? Knowing that you should only look on the side on the, on the right, I think, would handle most cases like that. I think here, here you should have kind of two phases. First, detect what is the system. Here, it is not uh, even and odd uh, sites, but something else. And if, if, if it is uh, even and odd uh, system, then you use like one algorithm and yeah. for this kind of that case, it's a different one. Yeah, that might be a third case we need to look at. Send me, send me an example and we can see how gloriously it, it breaks or you, not. You had this boulder example, which actually had this kind of addressing. And, uh, this one. Oh, this one? Yeah. You have this 22. Oh, that's true. I think it, it should be actually after 18 and between 18 and uh, whatever is after that not between 23 and uh, uh, 19. So that's a good example, actually, where 22 is probably oh, in a completely wrong place. That is a good example. Well, thank you. We're debugging live on stage, everyone. Hi, thank you for your presentation. Uh, I have some, just a short question. Uh, in previous presentation, before yours, uh, we could see that in Japan we have blocks of 19 uh, houses mm -hmm. in uh, one, uh, 19 house numbers in one block. Uh, some cases are present in my country too. So interpolation is not possible in these uh, situations or it is? I would say it's not. I actually checked Japan uh, when I was looking for good examples for interpolation. I think right now, um, for w I think the reason that, that interpolation for our interpolation doesn't work well there is um, is issues with with the the textual matching of the street name um, but I, I could be wrong but the problem with interpolation is it's always estimating what could be there um, an interesting thought experiment would be to figure out ways to say that there is definitively no address at this number um, one way might be maybe just indicate you know, good coverage in an area and pass a cer certain threshold, don't try. But interpolation is useful even in big cities where there's nearly full data coverage, right? New buildings are constructed all the time and having interpolation not necessarily correct missing data, but just briefly, you know, outdated data is also useful. So that would be really, finding a happy medium there would be really interesting. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks for the talk. And uh, I have a question about the data processing, because you mentioned like uh, Patios, uh, you guys import different data sources. I wonder you, if you can share some experience about consolidation of these different data sources. Uh, yeah. So, multiple data sources is a, both a blessing and a curse. Uh, you get more coverage overall, but you have to deal with duplicates and disagreements. Um, there's no easy solutions. It's, a, it's, it's painful. Um, but it's, it's worth it. And in Peleus, we, uh, you can always filter by data source um, is, is an option on all of the, the different types of, of querying you can do, which is really useful if you know you want OpenStreetMap data or you know you don't, for example. Um, and then right now, how we've generally set things up is we've, had a, we've built up a I don't know, no rhyme or reason, but really just empirical guidelines of what seem to work well for, say, deduplicating if there's an address from two different data sources. Um, maybe one has a postal code and the other doesn't. Just pick the one with the postal code, unless they were asking for a specific data source, in which case give them whatever they ask for. There's no perfect solution, but um, at the very least, getting to a point where having multiple data sets is always better than just having one is not too far away. Yeah. Fascinating presentation, thank you. Your unit of analysis seems to be the street rather than the block face. Uh, and I just wonder whether that's 
I mean, the examples that were given, that the odds will not necessarily line up uh, with the even, evens. Uh, there's also an anomaly that you haven't mentioned, which is how you deal with corner properties, which have anomalous addresses because you can't tell which street the address will be on from any mechanical way. And the final one was the missing addresses. Um, the United Kingdom is very superstitious. We have very few number 13s on right. streets. Uh, and again, you almost need to incorporate that into your interpolation schemes. If you find suspicious numbers of 11 A's, that, then that's understandable. Uh, but uh, very interesting work. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the, the missing addresses will be an interesting problem to solve. There are a lot of 13s in Peleus right now, is what, I, is what I would gather. Okay, so thank you, Julian, again. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>